Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be fitting up these sections of two and three eighths in between the four inch here. This is the circle burner. We carry them in the A. Ross Welding store. three sections one two three on each side three there and three over here but if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this point we will put a link in the description of all those videos what a beautiful morning absolutely gorgeous I think this thing turned out turned out pretty good so the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out the top of all my posts with string line and then just do what looks good I'm gonna stand back here in the road and just look at it I'm gonna look at it from down here and I'm gonna look at it from down here from every direction I'm gonna eyeball it just make sure it looks good with the with the land and whatnot and and the entrance combined all right well it looks like from down there and back here where we just were, it looks like this is either low right here or this needs to come down a little. I also like to keep in mind the average height of a fence, which is between four and five foot. So we're probably at, oh, we're probably right in between that right now. So I make it stand to come down a little. The ground's a little higher right here too. So just taking all that into consideration. Looking down his fence line, kind of seeing what this brace needs to do, you know, with the land afterwards. So, I mean, I'll mess with it. I'll mess with this string and get it looking right. And then mark my tops and do the same thing on the other side. Another thing that I try to keep in mind is, depending on the style of fence that we're doing, you want to make sure, like if the ground's different, but you're trying to make your top look the same or something like in this case the ground's lower right here and it's higher right here so wherever my shallowest post is shortest post is going to be you want to make sure you got enough room for your pipes and the spacing so i've already built my gates for this entrance so i will want to match these braces with the gate with the gate braces so i know my measurements and i roughed them in right here just so i knew i had enough room right here if i didn't have enough room i was gonna have to move the whole thing up you know fudge it up a little bit but that just means i would have to move everything up to keep it all looking right also another thing i kind of just thought of this may not always work but this string line wouldn't be a bad idea to make it kind of run with that overhead just in case like you're driving up from town you're driving up this road see how we're getting lower so like whenever you're driving up this road here you see this brace and you see this overhead and if it's like you know if this brace is you know looking up or down it just wouldn't look pleasing to the eye because it wouldn't be running with that with the overhead and like i said it may not always work like that depending on your terrain like if your terrain is coming down right here then it may not it's not going to be a deal breaker if it doesn't do that but like in this case i can and it looks like decent right now so it's just something literally just a lot of your eyeball when it comes to this stuff standing back and looking at everything getting everything looking right with the eyeball by the eyeball speaking of making my gates match this or my braces match my gates since i already built my gates i actually need to start up here so i need to come up here and kind of account for some gravel because he's actually got some gravel coming i think today so i need to kind of account for a little gravel through here and then the space for my gate and then make sure i got enough room there's enough leeway in here as long as i'm accounting for some some room it should be fine so i'm fixing to pull some measurements here maybe run a string line across this entryway level like at the bottom that way i can kind of see where the you know the ground is now and where some gravel might be and then measure start with my bottom and kind of go up and we're just, just kind of work up that way make sure my braces are you know going to be able to fall right in with the gravel and everything gravel gates and everything 
A more safe way to do this would be wait till the gravel's in to do any of this. It can be done without it. You just have to be thinking about it and a kind of accounting for that stuff. So it's not a deal breaker and they're wanting this done. So, so I believe we can make it happen, but just for future reference or any of you that uh, maybe haven't done your own entryway or whatever, a good idea would, or a safer idea on like a, a you know, if it's your first one or you're not sure, or you hadn't seen this video, if you're watching this video, you might be good. So you can be thinking about all that, but just a little side note, sometimes it's better to wait for all that to be in before you put all your braces in. Stop and take a coffee break. But I got her all laid out. This one ended up being level due to the dirt work. Let me get on the other side here of the sunshine. So I was able to put pretty much everything level, but that's because this dirt work that has been done helped that a bunch, which is good because the overhead is level. I should have known that by looking at this ground because with the dirt work being done everything is you know pretty close to level but i just have a habit of using my eyeball um at first but that's something i have learned you know uh, i always say there's room for improvement room to learn and that is definitely what happened here um shoot for level if you can you know look at the terrain first thing and see if you can make everything level if you can uh, make it level but it's always good to go with appealing to the eye anyway from here I can go ahead and mark everything where the string line is is the top of my pipe where I'm gonna be cutting everything but before I cut it I'm probably going to lay out where my rails are gonna be which is 11 and 3 8 uh, center to center that's what I built my gates to and I want these to match so I will go ahead and lay everything out find the center of my pipe put a punch mark and then go ahead and start cutting everything okay so right here we have four inch pipe in the center six inch pipe and eight inch pipe and what we did to set this middle pipe this four inch pipe was just take this string line and pretty much loop it around the eight inch all the way to the four inch that's behind me here and then just eyeballed the center we done this closer to the ground here we just eyeballed this piece of pipe in the center of those two strings so to find the center of this piece of four inch I'll take and measure from the string line doing my best to not push it over too much and then measure over to the center of this pipe to do that I will need to know the diameter of the pipe which is the outside diameter OD which is four and a half inch OD and we've got about an inch from the outside of the pipe to the string so take one inch and then add another inch for the outside of the other other side and then so that's two inches and then two inches plus four and a half is six and a half half six and a half would be three and a quarter so we can measure over from our string three and a quarter inches to find the center and then I will take my four foot level lay it along the pipe here up and down get it level and then mark a line all the way down it and then measure my spacing for my horizontal rails all right so i've figured out my spacing got that side laid out this right here is our cut mark and I want an inch and a half of pipe above my top rail because then I'm putting on a cap that's, I don't remember what it is, but it's roughly an inch and a half or so, an inch maybe. But I only want, you know, that much above the top rail because I think that looks good. So I come down an inch and a half and then I come down half a two and three eighths, which is an inch and three and sixteenths. And it totals two and 
three quarter, a little less, but I've been marking two and three quarter. So that's my center. That's where I'm gonna put a center punch for my circle burner. And then since I know my centers of my rails are 11 and 3 8 because that's what I built my gates to, I'm just gonna stick with centers since that's all I need anyway is centers for the circle burner. And I'm gonna go 11 and 3 8 center. 11 and 3 8 11 and 3 8 11 and 3 8 one, two, three, four, five rail, baby. And do this three more times, and we will be ready to cut some stuff. All right, it is now time to set up the circle burner. First, you gotta take this scarfing tip off. And put a good, clean, straight tip. Let's go with the old one aught. Tip. This is the circle burner that I keep talking about. Some of you know about them, some of you may not. But we carry them in the A Ross welding store. So that's the circle burner. It just comes in two pieces here. So what I normally do to set this up is get this pretty snug right here. So the pipe we're gonna be using is two and three eighths. Half of two and three eighths is an inch and three sixteenths. So I will take and measure inch and three sixteenths. I might put it at a quarter, but from the center here to the center of my tip. I'll also wanna make sure that this is sticking out a little bit, like longer than my tip. That way my tip's not in the metal because you want your tip to be up off the metal a little bit. So I'm gonna go, oh. Yeah, something, we'll try that. Check my measurement again. So you can either do it this way or you can come over here to one of your marks and come over an inch and 3 sixteenths and a quarter and bring this whole mess over here put your deal in here and adjust it like so pretty right on so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is snug and I'm gonna 
gonna go ahead and cut one and then try a piece of two and three eighths in it, see how it fits and adjust this accordingly. Not too shabby. I think I'm going to leave it. This is some really thin wall, like structural uh, six inch, so it didn't cut the greatest. But so let's try another method. By the way, this Diablo blade is a good blade. A while back, I tried this out and I wasn't sure about it because it was cheaper than like the other ones. Turns out it's a real good blade. I got the 90 tooth this time, 14 inch, 90 tooth, and uh, it cuts real good, real, real good. It's like 80 bucks if I remember right. So whenever I'm using this circle burner, slow and steady is the key. And 
running out of oxygen. But whenever I get about halfway, I kind of point my torch up. Whenever I get to about right here, I kind of do this. This is dramatic, but just so you guys can see, I point it up. I do that, but then I also try to keep my torch straight with the pipe instead of like this. Only because that pipe will slide in there better if you make your cut straight, you know, parallel with how the pipe is going to be in there. I don't have to do as much grinding. I had to do a little too much grinding over yonder, so I'm trying to adjust. So, point it up. But, I mean, you can come over a little, depending on how you, how wide you have this set. But, uh, point it up a little, but then try to keep it as straight as possible. caps on and sand it down now time to weld it out I'm gonna be using 532 8010 to weld it out I'm gonna put a little seal path aka root path aka bead aka filler path fence lingo to sew up you know any little gap like that uh, but to, to make it consistent I'm just gonna run a bead all the way around first pass on everything seal everything up brush it all off and I'm gonna come back and using the same rod I'm gonna put a nice little cap on there My advice for this week is slow and steady. I encourage you to enjoy the dance with the metal. Whether you're welding or grinding, take your time, be patient, enjoy the dance. I don't mean milk a job, I just mean take your time and focus on quality and the rest will follow. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out my website, arosswelding.com, for more resources and welding tools, the circle burners over there on my website. Also, check out my other channel we just started, Aros Welding Shorts. Over there on that channel, I'm able to share short informational videos where I can get straight to the point. You don't have to sit and watch a 25-minute video like you just did. I get straight to the point, answer commonly asked questions, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that. Also, we're trying to be more active on TikTok. That's been fun also. So follow us over there on those pages and we will see y'all next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.